and Coltrane is just as happy to be paired up with this Chuck E. Cheese looking dino robot as Whoopi was to agree to starring in this movie. He's a dinosaur. Come on, Coltrane. He graduated from the academy. He's a dinosaur. Give me results by prime time tomorrow. He's a dinosaur. Come on. He's a dinosaur. dinosaur. Perhaps she should have used that legal strategy to defend herself in court. If the dinosaur looks like shit, then it's Whoopi Goldberg you must acquit. Go, go. A few weeks ago, we saw the Jurassic World franchise drop its supposedly final installment, where Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard finally team up with the original Jurassic Park cast to again save the human race from extinction in Jurassic World, Dominion. And while Dominion certainly has dominated at the box office, it has proven just as divisive with critics and audiences as the last two installments. Even if that's not going to make much of a difference in Universal's continuing attempts to wring every last dime out of these damn dinosaurs. Just as John Hammond himself would have wanted. But not even the Jurassic series can possibly match the ridiculous heights reached by the direct-to-video team-up of Whoopi Goldberg and a low-rent T-Rex puppet dinosaur named Theodore Rex. Right after her historic Oscar win for Ghost made Whoopi a bona fide movie star, she half-heartedly said yes to a film producer's offer to star as a future police officer teamed up on a murder case with a walking, talking dinosaur. But upon attempting to wisely pull out of the movie, the producer sued Whoopi for a whopping $20 million and had an answering machine tape with her recorded agreement to help his case. Whoopi Goldberg team up with a new wave in law enforcement. Okay. So although Whoopi settled out of court to just make the damn movie for a slightly bigger paycheck of $7 million, none of that money would be seen at the box office after Theodore Rex's planned theatrical release was scrapped in the wake of poor test screenings, and instead went straight to the video store shelves, thus making this film the most expensive direct-to-video movie ever made. 1996's Best Family Comedy. <laughs> Not that going straight to home viewing means anything anymore in 2022, but still, as for the movie's reception from critics and viewers, let that best be summed up by the great Joe Bob Briggs in his hilariously brief introduction to the movie on TNT's Monster Vision. You know, my mama always said that if you can't say anything good about something, then just don't say anything at all, so... <laughs> Roll film. And since I have been subjected to this movie myself once or twice as a kid, let me discover if Theodore Rex is one species of cinematic dinosaur that deserves to come back from extinction. Is this not the same decade that saw Sylvester Stallone also getting tricked into making a shitty buddy cop comedy alongside a prehistoric co-star? For all we know, these two scripts got mixed up together by accident and it was Whoopi who was supposed to star with Estelle Getty, while Sylvester Stallone was supposed to star with the dinosaur. New dumb friend! <laughs> you know, I got it, look at it! Make sure you spare no expense on your choice of alcohol and hold on to your butts for a Jurassic round of the awfully good drinking game. Take a double shot when the movie begins with an expository title card that establishes it is set once upon a time in the future. Billionaire Elazar Kane will launch his new Eden missile to bring on another ice age. You know, perhaps the rise of Skywalker would have been improved if they also had some bullet points in their opening titles. Maybe this new Eden missile they're speaking of is what Palpatine used to somehow return. Then we open in black and white on Agent Fulbright from Beverly Hills Cop 3, modeling Nicolas Cage's latest hairpiece and chasing down an escaped dinosaur factory worker, so he can blow his ass up with some kind of colorful butterfly drone. In what is clearly an homage to Spielberg's other cinematic masterpiece from 1993, Tiny Toon Adventures, How I Spent My Vacation. It was the butterfly, I tell you. The butterfly! <laughs> And who should awake from this nightmare but the titular talking dinosaur of our story, Theodore Rex, living in an apartment with a loyal pet dog, washing his erect penis in the shower, working as a PR handler for the police department that patrols this movie's futuristic city known as The Grid, aka the DVD menu animation for this very movie. 
If only he could get his dream job to become the police's very first dinosaur detective. Well, dreamer. But alas, he is far too busy working on his cookie shooting machine. Cookie! Macadamia. Macadamia. My macadamia. Damia. Damia. Or, you know, you could just put the jar of cookies right next to where your door is. You know this shit isn't gonna get you far on Shark Tank, right? I believe this technology works because I've seen it work. He's an idiot! He's a con artist! <laughs> it turns out that Teddy Rex's dream that night was a premonition he had of a fellow dinosaur's death inside this abandoned carnival, thanks to the psychic link that all these genetically revived dinosaurs share with each other. Wait, are you telling me that all you dinos are on the same wavelength? We feel for each other. It's hard to explain. Yep, it sure is hard to explain, so why even bother to try? That's the motto for our movie. Teddy proposes he get temporarily promoted to detective, right to the face of the police department's newly elected commissioner, Lynch, played by the great Richard Roundtree. Sir, this was a dinocide. A dinocide? Yes. There's, uh, there's been a dinocide. And don't get your hopes up for this to possibly turn into Jurassic Shaft. Teddy's never-ending run of jokes at the expense of his giant tail bumping into these rich and fancy museum patrons mercifully comes to a stop when Commissioner Lynch's deputy, Alex Summers, proposes to Lynch that having Teddy as the first dinosaur police officer would provide a boost to the commissioner's sinking poll ratings in the wake of the city's first dinosaur murder. Cheers. Oh, Teddy. You have the case. <gasps> I'm the cop. Oh no, the dinosaur's giving into his feral instincts again. He just tore out Richard Roundtree's throat with his hands. Run for your life, everyone. We shouldn't have given these dinosaurs positions of authority over us. <laughs> but to ensure that Teddy doesn't screw this case up, Lynch is partnering him up with a human cop. Cold Stone. No, not William Zapka in the Asylum's Rambo Last Blood ripoff. I mean Whoopi Goldberg in the role of tough-as-nails detective Katie Coltrane, whom we've just seen with her original partner wearing this Rhythm Nation police outfit, facing off against a gang of Mad Max rejects that infest the city streets known as Zapheads. I'm vengeance. I'm from the grid police. Uh, are you collecting for the policeman's bar? As led by Bud Court from Harold and Maude as a cybernetic crackhead named Spinner, with Mr. Court now killing his career instead of himself this time. And Coltrane is just as happy to be paired up with this Chuck E. Cheese looking dino robot as Whoopi was to agree to starring in this movie. He's a dinosaur. Come on, Coltrane. He graduated from the academy. It's a dinosaur. Give me results by prime time tomorrow. It's a dinosaur. Come on. He's a dinosaur. dinosaur. Perhaps she should have used that legal strategy to defend herself in court. If the dinosaur looks like shit, then it's Whoopi Goldberg you must acquit. Things get off on the wrong foot between our two interspecies cops from the get-go, as their first stop to examine the corpse of the dead dinosaur, Oliver Rex, gets really weird really fast. Doctor, may I? May you what? <laughs> I think Whoopi's face just about says it all here, folks. It looks like the dinosaur is sticking his schlong inside this corpse's mouth and filling his mouth up with his dino DNA. <laughs> Thankfully, we move on to our next destination, the Extinct Species Club, where humans drink alongside the rest of these talking dinosaur species and can what best be described as fear and loathing in Beaver Rock, Vegas. Yes, Bond! They must be given booze to these things! I'm tripping balls, Fred! And let me not forget to mention that this movie posits a future where the tense relationship between these humans and genetically revived dinosaurs is exactly like the tense race relations between white and black people in modern day society. You're not a species, are you? I thought you people, you know, ate meat. Soft skin, I see. The only time you soft skin seem to pay attention to other creatures is to shoot them, eat them, or wear them. Are you listening to me? Look at me when you're talking to me! Are we sure this movie isn't just an ironic karmic punishment against Whoopi for laughing at Ted Danson's blackface routine? Reviving dinosaurs and teaching them to work, eat, and shit amongst human beings is not the same as enslaving a different race of people from their home country. There is a reason that Spielberg never made Amistad The Lost World. Ah!
and these cheap ass puppets give me the willies. I'm pretty sure one of them is whacking off at his table at the sight of Whoopi. He thinks you're kind of cute. Uh, <laughs> what is he doing? I mean, it's a whole thing. And even she breaks out into laughter at the sight of one of these things in the middle of a scene. And you think you're gonna get somebody? <laughs> Not tonight, baby. Even though she spends the majority of this movie looking like she would have rather paid the $20 million instead. Duh. But I mean no real offense to the hardworking crew members and voice actors who had to make the best out of some very bad material. Especially the voice actor of Theodore Rex, George Newbern. Who? You know, he's voiced Superman in many DC adaptations, he's the son-in-law of Steve Martin in the Father of the Bride movies, and he was also paired up as the human cop against a terrible ammo puppet this time in the sadly rejected ABC pilot Puchinski. You're a dog! I'm a cop! But anyway, performing at this club is the female T-Rex whom Teddy is about to investigate and fall madly in love with, Molly Rex who is voiced here by the legendary Carol Kane. Come on, let me clean on, feel like a bang. I'm no angel. Doing an impersonation of Mae West, despite this film's target audience not being 85 years old. <laughs> so as Whoopi continues to exude utter contempt for wasting her talents playing second fiddle to these sub Jim Henson dinosaurs, and our opening title card didn't explain how these dinosaurs came to be unextinct in the first place, I will have to introduce you to this movie's aforementioned evil billionaire villain, Elazar Kane, played by another great actor slumming for German tax shelter cash, Armin Mueller Stahl. Not many people get to meet their maker at a fundraiser, huh? God. Teddy is my crowning achievement. Wow. Years ago, I recreated dinosaurs to show how science could change the world, and I did. And in addition to bringing back the dinosaurs, Kane has also revived the many animal species which have gone extinct from the planet in the future. Elephants, lions, well, and keeps each of them at his personal zoo and headquarters. The new Eden Ecology Movement. Where Teddy Rex and Katie investigate Kane about the escape workers from his factory who are warning about some sort of doomsday plot. Alongside Kane's personal physician, Dr. Stone, played by Juliet Landau of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Ed Wood. And you are? Coltrane, grid police. And you are? Follow. Come, Teddy. Follow. Ha! Way to pick on her for a British accent. That's what their people deserve for trying to steal all of America's tea in the Evolutionary War! But little do our two cops know that it was Kane who schemed behind the scenes with the deputy police commissioner to pair these two ill-fitting cops on this murder case and have them off of his trail once they inevitably break up, as he indeed is executing a doomsday plot with the help of his two criminal underlings, Spinner and Edge. You keep your eye on the Rex and the gun, or I'll stick you in a blender. <laughs> Don't you be so quick to laugh yet, pal, because Teddy Rex is really gonna crank up the annoying Jack Assery as he uses a clothes changing machine at the police station to go undercover as a cultural stereotype. Ten hundred web puts. This is not undercover. Push the button. Just press the button, Max. Ella, undercover. Por favor, please. I would say that this movie just got itself canceled by the Mexican community, but I'm pretty sure that the only racial group that this movie could ever appeal to is. Absolutely fucking nobody! Mahalo! Katie and Teddy head back on the case in their replacement police vehicle, aka a garbage truck that was left behind by Ernest P. Whirl and Rimshot, and contrary to the look of please yell cut already on Whoopi's face, these two mismatch partners are indeed warming up to each other 48 hours style. Teddy is a reformed carnivore who has revoked his primal instincts for a life of vegetarian dieting, and a non-violent philosophy. It ran into some zap hits. Don't you have a gun? I don't believe in violence. And yet you want to be a police person. While Kitty Coltrane's backstory is so complicated that it's only really explained in detail in the film's novelization that was sent to me by my friend and fan of the show, Ryan Walterson, that Katie Coltrane happens to be a robo whoopie. You in danger, girl. That's right, just like Alex Murphy himself, Katie Coltrane nearly got shot down to death by the bullet of a hitman and decided to revive her body by upfitting it with some BioWare technology. I didn't know you were BioWare. We're implanted with biochips. We're more human than human. 
provided to her from the police's tech expert, Alaric, played by the late original voice actor of Stu Pickles, and the country crock butter commercials, Jack Riley. It explodes on contact with the victim. The work of a real artiste. Unfortunately, none of this backstory will be explained in the film itself. And Whoopi doesn't even so much wear a pair of glasses she stole from LeVar Burton off the Star Trek set to give us some visual indication that her character is a half-robot, aside from her Demolition Man meets Catwoman Lycra jumpsuit, which makes her being a robot entirely pointless to the film's plot. The Theodore Rex puppet is a more convincing robot than Whoopi is, and that's only because the drunken man puppeteering his eyeballs has apparently set this thing on the Detective Columbo setting. Uh, one thing about that accident, do you happen to know who else was involved? Since we unfortunately do not have a sex scene between our two lead T-Rexes, we instead find Teddy Rex getting excited over a night with Molly because of their mutual love of cookies. A little snack, maybe some milk and cookies. I'm a fool for milk and cookies. <laughs> oh, cookies! Cookies, 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 cookies! Then these two dance their passion away while Teddy drops more of these goddamn tail jokes right after he just used this fucking tail to play a game of street hockey with the Thunderdome Junior League team over here. Can we please cut back on all this corny comedy and get back to trying to understand this investigation plot by questioning yet another suspect? Welcome to dead storage. Who's gonna die? Is that a puppet of a Tim Burton drawing of himself as the hunchback of Notre Dame? What the hell is this little thing supposed to be? It doesn't look like anything! And why is it puppeteered by the Kyoto Brothers, the effects masters who gave us Large Marge's deformed face, the killer clowns from outer space, the trolls from Ernest Scared Stupid, and now a dwarf puppet who lives in a bowling bag with a talking caterpillar dick named Fuzzy. Fuzzy! Who then magically turns into a butterfly himself. This is us moving. Elevator up. I'm going. Woo! We are here. That leads our two cops to a terrorist from the, the ninja, ninja grid, grid part of town named the Toy Maker. Suck it! who was the guy who made the explosive butterfly robot that Edge used to kill that escaped dinosaur factory worker who was trying to warn about Elazar Kane's HOLY SHIT WHO GIVES A FUCK! Just have the dinosaur doing some shitty celebrity impersonations. Is anybody home, sweetheart? That's Tyrannosaurus Rex, girly boy. Yeah, they'll give us weapons, but they're too bleeping small. We got a problem with that because we need a gun. What? You know what I mean? So then Teddy gets the location of the Zap Head's hideout from this toy maker guy through some fart related torture. Nice chance. And then Katie busts in on the Zap Heads to treat them to an unused monologue from Whoopi's short lived talk show. Hey guys, how y'all doing? We had such a good time, you know, I was thinking about it the other day. And my partner is just really gonna be put out by this. Your partner? Uh huh. Silly man! <laughs> Then after stealing a flying bicycle from the Wild Wild West set, our heroes land inside Elazar Kane's new Eden compound, where Kane finally confirms to them the details of his evil doomsday plot to induce a second ice age upon the earth and begin the world anew like Noah did in the Bible by bringing two of each of his revived animals alongside him in space in this CGI rocket from a CD-ROM game. Impedance, birds, bacteria, etc. And yet, this big plot twist involving old German Elon Musk and Tommy Wiseau as the Joker was already detailed extensively in the film's opening titles 75 minutes ago. And create a new ice age. To bring on another ice age. You froze them here just to save them. All Earth's animals he keeps frozen in his ark. My paradise! His vision of paradise. I don't know whether they thought kids were too stupid to unfurl this plot revelation for themselves after the rest of the movie had already melted their brains, but it would basically be the same as if the Knives Out sequel was instead called Dave Bautista Did It, A Knives Out No Longer A Mystery. And I didn't even mention that Elazar Kane's thugs have kidnapped a loved one from each of our two hero cops in Shit Just Got Real Tradition, with Theodore Rex's lover Molly getting dragged from her bathtub and into a cryogenic chamber to be shot up into space alongside Teddy Rex, while Katie's young street urchin friend, Sebastian, is kidnapped by Spinner and his goons by posing as a fake arcade machine? 
You see, Warner Brothers, I told you that letting Ezra Miller also develop the Flash arcade game was gonna come back and bite you in the ass. So after Katie rescues the boy from being caged up in Kane's zoo alongside a monkey, Katie Coltrane must finally admit that Teddy's non-violent philosophy can indeed solve police work without the usage of a gun, but rather using Teddy's brain. You've been telling me a good cop uses a gun, right? I was wrong. <sighs> Use your brain. Or instead of a brain, you can just whack Kane's physician in the face with your tail and thus save your girlfriend from the cryo fridge. So the movie's telling us that it's okay for police officers to use brutal violence, just as long as they really put their brains to it. That's a great message for the kids. On top of the several people who have been shot dead by guns or blown up at fiery explosions in this ostensibly kid-friendly sci-fi comedy. <laughs> Damn it, Bud Court! Why did you convince me to use nitroglycerin and gasoline to varnish our company's signs? So with Teddy capturing Kane and stopping his doomsday plot, Theodore Rex can now graduate to becoming a full-time police detective alongside Katie. You the man. Now, dog. After a touching and timely speech against racism from their commissioner. Our survival rests on all species, treating each other with compassion, kindness, and respect. The fact that John Shaft and the Oscar-winning star of The Color Purple are forced to star in this far beneath them garbage says something about racism, but probably not in the way that the filmmakers intended. And thus our film mercifully ends with one final title card. A beautiful French. <laughs> see ya. Yeah. See ya. See ya. You see? Unless the next place that I see this movie is in the fucking torture dungeons of hell, then I hope I don't see Theodore Rex for a long time to come. Yeah, so what? Come on. Okay. Theodore Rex was the second and final directorial effort for Last Starfighter writer and My Science Project director Jonathan Batwell. And Whoopi has only recently been willing to talk about this movie in jest during her hosting gig on The View. And the movie itself is just as horrific as its reputation suggests, with an incompatible blend of Blade Runner future sci-fi dystopia and Turner and Hooch animal cop comedy, a barely animatronic dinosaur puppet with fart jokes aplenty. Just tiptoe. And okay. what is that smell? Is that you? It's not me. How could it be me? <laughs> and Whoopi looking just as pissed to be in this film as you are to watch it. But it's a once-in-a-lifetime cinematic disaster where you legit don't know what anyone was thinking. And it does more with the concept of dinosaurs living alongside humans than Jurassic World 3 did. So for that, I'd suggest Theodore Rex only for the strongest of bad movie masochists. Here's hoping we never get to see Viola Davis drunkenly send a DM to a movie producer agreeing to star in their movie adaptation of Puchinski. Look at me. I become a dog. Motherfucking warning! I'm a cop! On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Bull to Bruce, Theodore Rex is far more than just a horrifically inaccurate biography of President Theodore Roosevelt, and opens the door to get on the floor with a four out of ten. And sadly, this will not be the last time Whoopi will slum in a bad movie with wisecracking reptiles that look like shit. I'm Jesse Shade for JoeBlow.com, and thanks again for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the Joe Blow Originals channel. Tell all your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We are an independent company that appreciates all of your support. And my mama always said that if you don't have a good way to end your episode, then just don't have an ending at all. So... <laughs> See ya. Macadino, Abadino, Macadino, Dino, Dino. Macadino, Abadino, Macadino, Dino, Dino. Macadino.